All right, welcome to another video. This has been a channel favorite, this bike, and a lot of people are interested in the Honda CRF. 300L. I thought I would make this video because I've been getting some questions about the bike and how I like it so far. I have like five and a half thousand kilometers on the bike right now so I have a lot of experience off-roading this bike and uh, maybe I can talk a little bit about the things that I love about the bike and some of the things that I don't really like about the bike. So let's get into the video. I'll put timestamps in this video. First part is gonna be what I love about this bike and the second part is going to be what I don't really love about this bike. If you buy this bike, you have to consider that it's not an enduro bike. It's not a racing bike. Neither it is competing with the mid-sized twin adventure bikes either. So it has some minuses and pluses from each category. But it fits pretty well for me at least in the middle ground of those bikes. So let's start the love list from the torque from this engine. This engine, in my opinion, is for a 300cc four-stroke low-powered engine. This has a very good low-down torque. I can ride this bike in third gear, walking pace, without using the clutch and the bike is not going to stall. So it's very tractable. The engine's power is very, it starts from very, very down low. And that's something I love about this engine. Very easy to go to technical terrain and it's, uh, it's not stalling when you have the bike on the move. I'll talk about the flame outs in the negative sections. It's gonna come. Positive number two. It's definitely the highway comfort that this bike's, bike offers. And don't get me wrong, this is not a twin heavy adventure bike. It's not like that, but uh, I would say doing 60 miles an hour, like 100 kilometers an hour, this is far more comfortable than many of the other competitors in this segment. Even the very, very powerful bike like uh, KTM 690, I'm still gonna say that this is more comfortable cruising 100 kilometers an hour for many hours a day. So this has very low vibrations, of course, because the engine is way smaller. It's not gonna cause as much vibration into the chassis of this bike. So all the vibration that you get in the handlebars or your foot pegs, it's very minor, very minimal. I would say the tire choice makes a huge difference. So if you go with an aggressive knobby tire, you're gonna feel a little bit more from the road, but the engine is very smooth, powdery smooth. For a single cylinder, this is the smoothest engine that I've ever driven. So that's something I really like about this engine as well. This has plenty of power to do that 100 kilometers an hour and uh, it's not going to complain at those speeds. If you try to do 80 miles an hour, this is not the right bike for you. Number three, the gearbox. It's very smooth, very slick. All the changes happen like like dream. It's just you think about changing the gear and it's already in. It just works the way it's supposed to work. At least in my opinion, it's way smoother than most of the big bikes that I've driven. So the gearbox is really nice. And now that the 300 has the sixth gear, uh, it's also very nice on highway cruising. The way this comes stock, I like the gearing on this bike. If you do more off-roading, you might go with a smaller gearing, just change the cogs. But I haven't done that because I don't really feel the need for it. It's uh, really easy to drive off-road and really easy to drive technical terrain as well with the basic setup that these bikes come from, from the factory. Plus number four, the clutch on this bike. I have to say the clutch is also on the negative section, but the plus on the clutch is that it's super light to use. You can use it with one finger alone. Just press the clutch here, especially when the bike is running. There is so little resistance that uh, your fingers are not tired after a long day of riding off-road with this bike. So the clutch is mainly a positive, but there are some negatives about this slipper clutch on this bike that I don't like, and I'll talk to you through on the negative sections, but the lightness of the clutch and the operation of the clutch, I really like that. I'm not sure if I'm keeping the correct count, but I think it's number five now. I like the helmet lock on this bike. This is a very minor thing, but when you commute with this bike, when you go to shops and all that, it's so nice to lock the helmet on some native gear on the bike already comes from the factory and it works with the same key you use in the ignition on this bike. So the helmet lock on the rear of this bike 
is definitely one of the positives. As you can see from the video, I twisted mine because I crashed this uh, in Latvia <laughs> and I hit mine in the ground so hard that it's twisted downward. Okay, it's not the most robust mounting point on the, on the helmet lock, but the lock itself is really nice to use. I, I love that about this bike. Every bike should have that. And I think it's number six or something, I don't know even. But one of the positives is the quiet ride on this bike. Even though it's a thumper and uh, it doesn't have the fairing stock. I've installed this, I have videos about this by the way on the channel, so check them out. It's a very quiet ride. Even doing a hundred, you don't really hear the engine much. And uh, you doing this one hour or two hour long trips that I do usually with this bike, I don't even bother using earplugs most of the time because it's just so quiet this bike. Of course if you change the exhaust to some racing exhaust you're gonna get a lot more sound but as it is stock the bike is very quiet and that's a positive in my opinion. And one of the things that I've always loved about this bike is the looks of this bike. It's a very handsome machine and uh, with this rally tower I think this is even better but even when it comes to stock, the stock bike, the bike is really, really a good looking bike. I've done this red hand guards and all that basic stuff, but uh, the bike is really good looking right out of the box before you do anything to this bike. It's the, it's the lines or something. I just really like the bike's looks. The last positive that I have to mention is definitely the reliability of this bike. Of course, I don't have a huge amount of miles on this, but mostly off-road, five and a half thousand kilometers, this bike has never failed me. There's been no problems with the bike, nothing. But because it's a Honda, it's no surprise that it's gonna be a really reliable bike. Service intervals and the reliability on this bike, it suits me well. I would have no problems traveling this around the world, even. So. That's a, that's a very good positive of this bike. That's it about the positives. Let's go into some of the negatives that I don't really like about this bike. There are not a lot of them. And I have to mention that I do like the bike. I would have sold this a long time ago if I didn't. So because people are interested, I'm gonna mention a few. Of course, the power of this engine is never gonna be enough for someone who likes the KTM 690s or the EXC series of enduro bikes. This, this bike is not competing with those bikes, in my opinion. This is more of a dual sport. I have to say that it's kind of nice to own a bike that you can uh, use all of the power available. In most of these bigger roads, you can just hammer this bike 100% and it feels really fun. There's nothing, nothing uh, quite like it. These uh, plucky little dual sport bikes that don't come with the high amount of power. It's uh, definitely, in some sense, it's a positive to me. It's fun to ride. But this is, of course, very subjective. If you want a bike that you travel with, you adventurize in your local, local forest and local neighborhood, this is a really nice bike. But if you want the best performance on an enduro track or a motocross track, this is this is not gonna be for you. So that's one of the negatives I have to mention. It's not really a problem with the bike, but it's never gonna be the most powerful that you can buy. The second part that I don't really like about this bike are the instrument buttons. This is a very small niggle on my part, but pressing these buttons is really difficult when you have your gloves on. And of course, you're always gonna have some kind of a glove on when you ride the motorcycle. So at speed, these buttons are really difficult to press. So I don't really even use the trip meters and all that much because uh, with your finger alone, they're okay to press and you kind of feel with your finger where the button is pressed down. And when it's not, you feel a very, very minor click. But with even Enduro gloves, you're never gonna feel that click. So they're really difficult to use. So Honda should definitely do something about these buttons. Maybe they're reliable and maybe they're very robust, but they are the worst instrument buttons that I've ever used on any bike. <laughs> definitely hands down. And next is the seat. Taking off the seat requires a tool. It's an Allen key. So you have to take off these two bolts on the side here. 
and uh, at least without doing any modifications you can't do that without the tool so that's something i don't like i would hope they would because it's a dual sport bike it's not an enduro bike i hope honda would add a key on this so you could open the seat with your ignition key that would be a big bonus in my opinion and the next negative is definitely the low down jerkiness of this engine so I know it's tractable on low, very low speed and it's going to chuck along very well on low RPMs but it's not going to be very smooth. When you're doing 40 or 30 kilometers an hour in the town you kind of feel like the bike is jerking around very easily. It's so difficult to just use the throttle to keep the bike stable so it is a little bit jerky. Some people have been saying that if you change the exhaust, if you decat the exhaust that's going to help a little bit. And one thing is the ECU change to maybe 550 ECU, but I have no experience in that. So I'm just talking about the bike as it is stock. So I might do those upgrades later in this summer, but as it is, it's very jerky in town speeds. You don't really notice it when you ride here normally, but when you have to be on in traffic, very low speeds, you really notice the jerkiness of this bike. And then the stock suspension is really jumpy. You can probably live with the stock suspension on this bike, but I'm gonna be very bold and say that you're gonna get so much more from this bike if you upgrade. Pretty much any solution on the market is gonna be better than the damping on the stock solution of this bike. The stock front end is I guess it's okay, you can live with it, but especially the rear end of this bike is so jumpy and, and it's, so, it's so lively when you ride it off-road. When you get, go to a couple of bumps in between, very close distance to each other, the bike is just gonna fly. <laughs> so it's so unreliable on those situations, it's very sketchy to ride fast on this bike when it has the stock suspension. I have the rally rate set up on this bike and it has been very stable at speed. So even if you hit a few gnarly bumps at a higher speed, it's very stable and the bike itself is very stable. The chassis feels very comfortable to cruise on and I can trust the bike when I do higher speeds off-road. So changing the suspension on this bike, even though it's the most expensive upgrade you can probably do on this bike, I would highly, highly recommend you to change the suspension to something else because you're going to get so much more out of this platform if you do the upgrade to the suspension. And don't do the springs alone. If you do that, it's uh, still going to be, the, the shock is going to be very really bad even though you change the spring. It's never going to be that good. So I would recommend just swapping it out completely, even though it is a little costly, but you're going to get a lot more from the bike. The next one is the cutoff of this engine. It cuts off, it flames out so often. When you start moving from standstill with first gear, you throttle up and you release the clutch, it just flames out and stalls. That's a very known issue with these bikes. It's not it's nothing serious, you don't have to get worried about that, but it's very, very annoying when it happens. The visor is fogging up for some reason. Can't see much. Okay. Basic flame outs of the Honda. That's one problem that I don't like about this bike. The cutoff issue can be remedied maybe with the ECU upgrade and the exhaust and all that, but as the bike is stock, the flame outs is an issue when you start moving but the, it has never I don't think it's never happened to me when I'm moving when I have some speed it doesn't happen but when I'm in a standstill and I start moving that's when it happens quite a lot actually <laughs> if you do a longer day of riding it happens at least once every every day so that's definitely something I have to mention here then I talked to you about the clutch, how nice the clutch is. And that is true, it's very nice to use because it's a very light clutch. But there is a but to this uh, slipper clutch. I don't know if it's, it's normal with slipper clutches, but this doesn't have a very precise biting point. So it's kind of difficult to just clutch up the front end, for example, because it's, it's just slipping the clutch. 
the biting point is so big or it's just slipping that it's it makes the bike really easy to ride on but it's really difficult to do anything gnarly like ride a little bit more aggressively because the clutch is just uh, like if a beginner clutch i would hope it would have a more pronounced biting point the clutch so that's something negative about this i'm sorry about the plane Maybe it's not so bad on the video, but <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a small plane right up above me. Really interesting, but it's making noise. And I hope it's not ruining the video. But yeah, the clutch is, uh, although it's nice to use, it's a very soft feeling clutch and you don't really feel the biting point because there is none. One of the things that is also a positive and a negative about this bike is that Okay, comparing it to the Tenere 700, for example, this is a very light bike and I can lift this up much easier than the Tenere 700 when it comes to getting stuck off-road or getting it stuck here in the snow. I can get by with the bike. I can lift it up by myself. I don't need any, I usually don't need to call any help or assistance with this bike. With the Tenere, it's a different story. But then why it's also a negative is that this is of course going to be way heavier than the KTM EXC series of bikes that weigh like 110, 120 kilos at the most. This is 140 something on paper when it's wet. So it's quite heavy compared to those purpose-made Enduro bikes. So you're never going to get that experience with this bike. But yeah, it's a good middle ground in my opinion because it's a little bit heavier than those racing bikes. It's also very stable at speed, so it's not going to vibrate as much as those uh, lighter, more aggressive bikes are going to do. So there you see how I get it out when I get it stuck somewhere. Sometimes you look at the road and it looks really nice, but there is a surprising amount of snow and you get the rear end stuck and you have to dig it out. But it's I'm able to do it with this bike. With the heavier twin bikes with 200 kilos of weight, that's a lot of work because it's a lot of work even with this bike. But uh, this is something I can manage the weight in. And I could get a little bit, a few kilos off the bike if I change the battery to lithium and if I change the exhaust to something else, I can probably get around uh, maybe five to 10 kilos lighter. But even as it is here, stock, pretty much stock, it's not as bad as uh, those bigger adventure bikes. If you still after all that are thinking that this might be an option for you, I would definitely go for this bike. If you want to save some money buying the bike, buy the L version and then do the rally tower upgrade. You're still going to be, at least in Finland, you're still going to save a thousand euros or something. And if the tank is too small for you, swap it to the Acerbis tank. The Acerbis tank is uh, lighter than this stock tank. So you're gonna get a little bit lighter bike without the negatives of the rally. You don't have as much plastics here to break down if you fall the bike over. So I would still go with the L version because of these upgrades that I upgrades that I've made on this bike. So I highly recommend the Honda CRF. If, if this is something you're looking for, it's a no-brainer. I, I love this bike and I'm probably still gonna own this bike a couple of years. And I have some plans on making a, a longer trip with this bike as well. So that's something I'm figuring out if I, if I can do that next summer, maybe, maybe. If you have something you wanna know about the bike, ask it in the comments. And if it's something bigger and more interesting, I might do a video about that later as well. But uh, that's the Honda CRF 300L. Really nice bike. And uh, if this is something you're looking for, just go for it. See you on the next videos. Bye.